Midnight takes life and love very seriously. What do you say to those who feel that Midnight is too mature for his age to be believable? Well, um, I really don't have much to say to people who think that the character is unbelievable because those are people who are short on imagination. And they're probably the same people that sit in the theater and watch uh, somebody Caucasian climbing up the wall you know, with a web or flying through the sky without a plane um, or doing miraculous things. There's a tendency whenever there is a strong African character in literature or film for people to say that it's unbelievable. Um, and it's interesting because this is fiction that I'm writing. Mm -hmm. So the objective is not that it has to be believable. The objective is that it has to be a great story. I don't know how believable Harry Potter is. <laughs> um, I don't know how believable any of these large white fictional icons that African people all around the world give their money to are. Uh, but I know that the character that I created um, embodies African genius. Mm -hmm. And I know that African genius is real. And I know that it's hard for people to imagine that African genius is real. Um, but I know that it is. So I find the character 100% believable. And I think anybody who takes the time to sit down and read every single word that I place on every single page will not only find the character believable, but will find them refreshing and powerful and original and inspirational um, and necessary. Midnight expresses confusion and disdain throughout the novel with the customs and culture of American life, especially as it pertains to American-born Blacks. Do you think that it, it is this very confusion and disdain that contributes to the contention and mistrust that exists among foreign-born Blacks and African Americans? Um, I don't think that Midnight has a particular disdain for African American uh, people. I think that Midnight uh, comes from an orthodox religion and an orthodox background. And anybody who studies religion uh, knows that the orthodox members of an Islamic religion or a Jewish religion or a Christian religion are the most strict and the most stern and the most strident um, in their beliefs and in their lifestyle. So I think uh, Midnight measures everything that he sees and everybody that he sees through his orthodox Islamic eyes and experiences. <coughs> I think that um, because he his family moves into Brooklyn, he's surrounded by African Americans, and in the story, he talks about what he sees, what he observes. And so I don't agree with the characterization of there being disdain. I believe that he's just a, a strong, spiritual person who is really shocked, not confused, but shocked by the lack of moral uh, fortitude and the lack of spiritual evolution and spiritual civilization in America. And he's also shocked by the power that America has to change people who don't even come from America and who grew up with a religion and grew up with a culture, the power that America has to convert them into the same kind of moral lessness. In the book, Midnight attracts the attention of many young females, but ultimately chooses to love and devote himself to only one. And it is his ability to love deeply and genuinely that sets him above and apart from many men. Why do you think it is so difficult for some men and women to love each other and honor their commitments? I think that once the family is destroyed physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, that it will be very difficult for us to produce balanced children. And so what we have is 
a nation of single mothers raising boys and girls in the absence of the father. So you have a confused mother uh, raising children. You have confused fathers who have abandoned the children. And therefore, you have confused children. So I think it's a vicious cycle. I think that there was a time period when I was young where I used to hear my aunts and older women say, we don't need him. Don't worry about your father. He's nothing. He's nobody. We don't need him. Um, You still have the same things. You got the sneakers that you wanted. You got the bracelets that you wanted. You got... And I constantly hear black women minimize uh, the loss of male companionship of, of a father to their children. And I think that um, it's a mistake. I think that I think that we do need fathers in our lives. And I think that wives do need husbands in their lives. And I think that husbands need wives and husbands need their children. You know, fathers need their children. So I think that we've become accustomed to a very vicious cycle that um, allows us to believe that it is okay uh, for us to continue on uh, without cohesive family units. And I think that it has added to all of the problems in our environment that we don't have these family units. I know it definitely added to my family. Midnight observes and evaluates the females in his life throughout the book, from his beautiful mother Uma to the many females who vie for his attention. He is very critical of the way that American women carry themselves and relate to men. What do you say to people who find Midnight's criticism overly harsh and judgmental? Um, I say grow up. I think it's important <laughs> to be able to process constructive criticism. And more important than that is the ability to be honest. I think a lot of people are dishonest, deluded, and fantasy-based. Um, for example, I have a few women who have emailed me their rage <laughs> at the African-American female images. And I asked them, did you send a letter to Superhead? Did you? <laughs> Did you send a letter to Flavor Flav? Did you send a letter to uh, the estate of Notorious B.I.G.? Did you send a letter to B.E.T.? Did you send a letter to the black bookstore owners that have pictures of black women Mm -hmm. in completely derogatory uh, poses and positions and postures Mm -hmm. as the number one featured books in their mm-hmm. store, yeah. and then you have the nerve <laughs> to sit down and send a letter to Sister Soldier, you're obviously crazy. <laughs> okay, um, you have labeled Midnight as constructive criticism of the way that many of us are living. What role do you think that constructive criticism plays in the ability of African Americans to move forward? What makes criticism constructive? When is criticism not constructive? Constructive criticism is needed for everybody in every single race. For every human being needs constructive criticism. Uh, If you have the inability to be criticized constructively, then it means you have the inability to make corrections. And if you can't make corrections, you can't make improvements. And if you can't make improvements, then your life will never change. So constructive criticism is necessary for each and every one of us. Even if you were an alcoholic, the first thing that you would have to admit is that you have a problem. If you can't get beyond the stage of recognizing that there is a problem, then you can't get into the stage of challenging the problem and healing from the problem and ultimately solving the problem. So uh, I think that constructive criticism is necessary for our community, but I think that a lot of black leaders are, are um, shy or, or dishonest or afraid to put constructive criticism out 
because they themselves are living foul. Mm. And the bottom line is that once you criticize constructively, you have to at least be living the example <laughs> of the criticism that you're making. Mm -hmm. And if you're not living the example of, of being free from criticism that you're making, then you land yourself in the category of being a hypocrite.